What is going on guys? I'm back on the mic today from Spectral Sound and today I'm going to teach you how I remade the main screech from Moonbox Cartel's remix of Forbes by Borgor. Here's a little bit of the remix and then you'll hear my creation right beside it. Here we go. Alright now before I get into this tutorial I just want to say I've created a Facebook group. I did mention this in a previous video a couple videos ago but I have created a Facebook group. It's just kind of a community group for my subscribers where I can connect with y'all and you know, kind of talk to y'all, see what y'all think about music and what, like tutorials I should do. And I am approaching my thousand subscriber mark, which is very exciting. And what I'm gonna do for that is I think I'm going to do a live stream. If you want control over what I do in the live stream, I have posted a poll on that Facebook group with some options of what exactly you want me to do. So if you want me to create a track, you want me to work on sound design, if you want to do like Q&A or like challenges, stuff like that, you know, it's so whatever you want. So I'm, I'm seeing what you guys think about that. So if you go click on the link below, you can join the group and I'll just approve you. I check it a few times a day, so it doesn't really matter. You'll get in pretty fast. I highly suggest you go down there and give that a follow so you can keep getting updates about that thousand subscriber live stream so that you know when it is and you'll be able to be there when it happens. All right, without further ado, let's get into this tutorial. There is no processing. Oh, I thought there was no processing. Okay, well, there's just a quick EQ, a ducking of the very high end like in this original track. You can see again. <laughs> I just wanted to take that away so y'all could see the similarities between the both a little easier. And I'm just rounding off the low end to clean off any sub. There is no sub in this patch, no sub base needed. All right, here is the serum patch itself. Now this is pretty funny because it was extremely similar to one of the patches I gave out in my 500 subscribers special. Uh, man, I forget what that was called. What was it called? It was like Stung or something? No, I don't think it was called Stung. Yeah, it was Stung because Hornet was the other one. Okay. Yeah, it was very similar to the bass stung that I gave out. So I took that patch and I did a bunch of edits, you know, simplified a little bit so it would be easier for the tutorial and just made it match this sound a little better. But the main thing that makes the sound is both FM and a comb filter. So I will get to both of those and I'll show you the importance. All right, first off for this LFO one, we're gonna create this shape. This is going to just make the, the plucky sound. That's gonna be the main modulator of the volume in this case. For LFO2, we're just gonna do a quick rise at two bars. This one was quick at like eight bars on envelope mode. But this one right here is going to be off and turn on two bars, so it's a slow rise up. For LFO3, this is on one eighth, and it's going right here up to the middle, so it's super quick slide. This is going to be for the pitch, and I will get to that modulation as well. All right, starting out the patch, just turn on oscillator A and select a sine wave. This is all we have right now. It's nothing. You can see I'm doing things with the MIDI here, and it's not, no, nothing's coming through because it's a super low sine wave. So we will be creating the main sound using FM. All right, the wavetable position is, you know, it's the basic shape, so it's all the way down. The level is modulating from 0 up to 100 with LFO 1 here. The FM is at 28%, going up 24. So that's where we'll be get creating a lot of that timbre. All right, now select LFO 3 here, and we're just gonna put it on this course and turn it all the way up. Make sure it's bipolar and just flip it all the way up. So it comes on, it's like that, and just flip it up. Make sure to not flip it back around because that'll be going the reverse way. Just turn it up the way that it was going and you're good. All right, down a couple octaves and we are done with that. Let's turn on oscillator B. This one is going to be a Reese Mess 2 in the spectral tab, I believe. Yeah, Reese Mess 2, there it is. All right. The wavetable position is going to start all the way down and it's going to be modulating up 76 or 75, you know, whatever, just around that area. We're going to turn on some pulse width modulation. There's 57% going down, negative 39. So that's just creating space at the end of the waveform. You can see when that happens. It's just going back and forth with adding and subtracting this space right here. Now all this really does to the sound is just give it a little more of a thinner tone, make it not as like thick because this isn't a thick sound. It's a really thin screechy pluck. It doesn't take up a lot of space. So that's what I wanted to achieve here with that. All right, throw this up two octaves and do the exact same thing with the coarse pitch that we did here, except don't put it up all the way. I only put it up like 37. You could put it up to like 40, you know, 
make it even I'm OCD like that all right the level for this one is gonna be all the way down because we are frequency modulating with it we don't need any level for this signal all right now with all of that this is what we have Real quick, just let me say, I turned this pitch bend right here up to eight and I modulated it up with this channel envelope right here. That's all it's doing. It's just sliding up this pitch bend right here. All right, next let's turn on the filter. The comb filter is very important in this sound. Now this is what it sounds like with the comb on. Especially around the end, you're hearing it a lot. That's because I'm using this to control the resonance. Now real quick, let me just go over what these, what these levels are. 76 hertz for the cutoff and it's modulating up just one one single percentage there with lfo1 because when you move the cutoff even just a little bit there's a big difference with the comb filters with the flangers and on the really like high phasers and reverb and stuff all those really intricate filters move it just a little bit it's a drastic change so i only wanted a little bit of motion there it's also modulating the residence from zero up 22 so that's basically controlling the resonance is kind of acting like a dry wet here because if you turn the resonance all the way down there's no peakage there are like no peaks the peaks are not high at all but then when you turn it up the peaks get really high you don't have to mess with the pan that's 50 percent turn the drive up just a little bit 12 it's you know just not a lot just to get it back up to normal level because normally the comb filters and stuff subtract but i wanted it to do an even amount of like adding and subtracting so I just turn the drive up to 12 just to get it right in the center there. For the low pass frequency, that's at zero. You can modulate it up 100. Again, kind of acts like a dry wet. It's like a low pass filter for the filter because there's all these peaks going on. But then when you turn up the low pass frequency, that ducks down all the high frequencies. So if I turn it up to like the middle, you'd see it. I'm not going to do it right now because I have a bunch of other modulation and that would mess up the patch but you'd see there'd be a lot less peaks in the higher region and a lot of peaks in the lower region. So that's working like a low pass filter, just sliding up and down with that. Mixes all the way up, turn keyboard tracking on and you should be good. Now, let me show you the modulation for LFO2 right here. It's modulating the resonance from zero up 63. So that's, it's going really high, especially when you take into account that this is modulating up a little bit right here too so it's going to continue modulating even when this thing has hit the very top also we're going to modulate the low fast pass frequency again with this one that's basically saying once it gets to about here there's constantly going to be really high peaks like the modulation for that is going to almost stay the same it's just going to be modulating up here instead of down here and up I don't know if that makes sense, but all it's saying is there's going to be no low end modulation for this knob like at all. All right, flip on some bright white noise I got right here. All I did was modulate the level. It's at 0% going up 20. Pretty basic stuff just fills out space. Okay, now on to the effects. Throw on a multiband compressor. The threshold is at negative 10.1 and these are all the same and there's no gain. The mix is all the way up. Just basic, basic compression, multiband compression things right here. The high band is at 25%, the mid band is at 200%, and the low band is at 0%. There are no lows to compress here, let's not get any weird phasey low end compressed. Throw on some hyper dimension, the mix is at 50% for this. The size is down at zero, and I just turned the mix up 15, just a little bit of hyper dimension, because this, this you know, the hyper makes a really cool wide stereo effect, and the size makes it sound a little more normal. It doesn't affect it as much as just widen it out and how this works if you turn the size up too much you'll get a weird delay even though the size is all the way down i was still getting a little bit of that delay because this sound is so sharp and staccato i just wanted to turn the mix way down so we didn't get like we didn't get almost any delay and because i didn't want any of that i just wanted to create a little bit more width now this is what we got with the compression and hyper dimension All right, that's a really sharp piercing sound. So let's throw a little bit of distortion on it. Now this distortion is not doing what you think it's doing. It's not actually distorting the sound. It's a lot more of just containing the sound. You can hear what it sounds like. That is a lot more contained and kind of toned down than with it off. You know, like these, these things really boost, especially this multiband compressor. They're just really boosting some piercing harmonics and making it 
just really pounding the dynamics through. So I'm just, you know, kind of, it's almost like a compressor at this point because it's not doing much distortion, especially since I turned the hard clip on. Because normally the drive for the hard clip is, is at about like there, but I turned it up a little bit. So these peaks are just at the very top. So we're just evening it out and making sure it's all at an even level. The mix is all the way up. The drive is at like 30%, you know, like I said, just making sure these are going to the corners. And I'm using the filter on this one to cut out any of those weird low frequencies because even though we did turn the low end compression down to zero, there were still a little bit being compressed because I turned the threshold down as much as I did. So you can just flip this on, high pass filter right there. I got the frequency at like around 280 or 300 or just wherever in that area. And you don't need it peaking a lot. Like you don't want it to peak a lot unless you want to boost a certain frequency. I really didn't in this case, especially since it's moving up and down. So it's just rounding off the end there. And it's also controlling the high end. You can see it goes down a little bit, but we're gonna make sure, we're gonna make sure everything evens out in the end. All right, for a phaser, I have the mix all the way down, modulating up 100% with this LFO one and doing the old thing with the frequency I love to do. It's at like 20 hertz right now, modulating up 30. When you do that, when you turn the rate and the depth down and modulate the frequency, it gets that <laughs> kind of feel like if you're adding talkage to a bass, if you're making the bass talk, especially if you're making like a wow or a whoa sound, the phaser is really good for doing this because it has, it has all those dips in the spectrum and it just has a lot of vowel motion. I love doing it. So I just wanted a little bit to this. And even though it is modulating all the way up, it's only there for like an instant. You see, the modulation doesn't stay high for very long. It stays down for most of this cycle. So it's down in the low mix most of the time and it just pops up to the high mix once this LFO comes up. All right, now this is what we got. All right, now throw on a chorus to get, you know, it's really like gritty and solid at this point. I wanted to just widen it out a bit, make it a little bit thicker. So I have the mix down at zero and I'm modulating it up 50% with LFO one. The rate is at 0 0.01 Hertz. The delay is at 0, 0.0 and delay two is at 0 0.3. Just super tight delay right here with the chorus. The depth is at 20 milliseconds and the feedback is at 10%. Just turn the low pass filter all the way up so we are using the chorus on all of the frequencies. All right, now this is what we got. All right, I dig it, I dig it. Let's throw on some EQ. These are both peaking EQs that are kind of sculpting the high end for the sound. I didn't do any like modulation for this. I just wanted to use it like a normal EQ. I know it's crazy. You can use the EQ like an actual EQ, not like a filter. It's really cool. For this left EQ peak, we have the frequency at 13546 hertz. Uh, the Q factor is at 35% and the gain is up at 6.1. So that's this top peak over there. I know they're switched around. The bottom is at the top and the top is at the bottom, but whatever, it's just, I didn't bother changing it. So that's just boosting the really high end where things aren't screechy, but they're really clean sounding. So I wanted to do that. And this one right here is just dipping down those really piercing frequencies that you're, you're hearing, you're going, when you're hearing it really loud, you know what I'm saying? The gain for this is negative 4.4. The Q factor is at 45% and the frequency is at 7,186. All right, some delay. This delay is not doing what a normal delay does. This is acting just as a really tight delay to add a little more metallic feel. So the feedback is at 50%. The left variable is at 3.96 and the right variable is at 11.31 just super super tight numbers right here you also need to turn bpm and link off otherwise you won't be able to get those different and you won't be able to get that specific of a variable for this filter here i just rounded off the bottom and the top end so we're not getting like all of them but we're getting most of the frequencies right there and it's just on normal for this one the mix is at 50 percent, so it gives us just a little more metal sounding thing here It's subtle, but you, you can hear it, especially because it's just fading out a little bit in the end. And as usual, for the last bit, we are adding a little bit of reverb. You can throw it on a plate reverb for this one. The size is at 22%. No pre-delay for this one. Cutting the low frequencies at 13%. Like, there isn't, that, that isn't a very specific number. Like, you could do whatever for that one. There really are no reverbing low frequencies. The high cut is at 35%. 
the damp is at 28 and the width is all the way up so we get the full stereo field. The mix is just at 17. There isn't, I didn't want a ton of reverb, there wasn't huge amounts of reverb on the sound. It was, it was kind of dry to be honest, but I just th threw in there to fill in space and it sounded like the original so I kept it. If you are curious about the MIDI, which you may be, this is the MIDI, it's just C, C sharp repeated over and over again and the pitch slide is done with this serum pitch bend right here. Also want to say, if you're using FL Studio and you want to modulate this pitch pen, you have to make sure that this number right here is at least the number that you have down here. Alright, so that is the tutorial. I hope you liked it. If you did, leave a like below. Also subscribe for more music tutorials on a weekly basis. Don't forget to join that Facebook group. The link to that is down in the description, as I've said before. And as always, peace out.